I'm Stacey Galandi with Ask the Doctor, a LifeScript Cedar sinai Women's Health Report. We're all familiar with the signs of diabetes, excessive thirst, blurred vision, nausea, and fatigue. But did you know that there are unique warning signs specifically for women? Vaginal infections, sexual discomfort, and even depression are some of the symptoms women with diabetes experience. Understanding how diabetes affects women can mean the difference between surviving and thriving with the disorder. LifeScript's Mari Cartel has more. Katie Devaney was a healthy young woman, but Katie was about to hit the wall. I gained, you know, 30 pounds within a couple months, and I just didn't know what was going on. Weight gain was just the beginning of her symptoms. I had a lot of bloating. Early on, I had acne when I was younger. Um, and I just, I felt a lot of fatigue and I was always tired and my doctors had tested me for my thyroid, but it, even with my thyroid treatment, it didn't seem like it was really solving a, a lot of my other symptoms. Medical tests revealed Katie was pre-diabetic and on a fast track to type two diabetes. She watched her father struggle with diabetes for years, but never suspected in her twenties, she was headed down that same path. It's a condition her doctor, Ruchi Mathur, director of the Diabetes Center for Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, has seen many times before. So in this country, there are about 60 million people that have prediabetes, and the majority of them are undiagnosed. So it's a very, very common thing, but you don't really find it unless you look for it. And so when a young woman comes in and she's complaining of an inability to lose weight, or she has other symptoms that might be suggestive of something that's related to insulin resistance, like polycystic ovary syndrome, we usually, at least in our clinic, um, test them to see whether they might have insulin resistance. Medicines helped regulate her blood sugar levels, but it was Katie's 70 plus pound weight loss that really got her health under control and changed her relationship with food. I enjoy food so much more. It was before it was just something I had to do, you know, you know, just to keep me running. <laughs> because I was so active all the time. It's like, oh, I'll grab a quick bite here or there. Managing diabetes is a lifelong commitment, says Dr. Mathur, because Katie will always face a higher risk for type 2 diabetes, partly due to her family history. She'll always be at risk for putting on weight. It'll always be a struggle for her, but she has the tools, um, and that's really the most important thing. So overall, if she can keep her lifestyle up, I think she'll be really successful. Katie is just one of millions of women facing diabetes. From Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, I'm Mari Cartel. Thank you, Mari. We're joined now by Dr. Rushi Mathur, Director of the Diabetes Program at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Welcome, Dr. Mathur. Thank you, thank you for having me. When it comes to um, diabetes, is it much like heart disease in that there are gender differences and, and maybe we just don't know what those differences are yet when it comes to women? It is possible. We know that there are some hormonal influences that occur, um, but for the most part, the pathology and, and the course that diabetes takes tends to be roughly the same in men and women. What role do hormones play in this disease? Well, we do know that estrogen can play a role in blood sugar control and that some women experience cyclic changes in blood sugars depending on what their estrogen levels are. Now, can menopause trigger or make the condition worse? It can make it harder to control because the estrogen levels fluctuate so much during menopause. As they're decreasing, they can uh, fluctuate a fair bit and women can find that it's difficult to control their blood sugars, whereas prior, they were doing a fairly good job in that regard. What about pregnancy? Can this actually increase a woman's risk of getting type 2 diabetes later in life? It depends. Uh, if you have gestational diabetes, there can be an increase in risk. About 5 to 8 percent of women in this country have gestational diabetes, which is diabetes that manifests first time in pregnancy. The majority of those women will come back to have a normal blood glucose after the baby's born, but 30 to 50 percent can go on to develop type 2 diabetes. The risk increases depending on ethnicity, it can increase depending on age, and also if a woman doesn't get her weight down. We hear that women with diabetes are more prone to having recurrent vaginal and yeast infections. Is that true? That is true. They're actually at risk for infections everywhere, but the caveat is that occurs if the blood sugar is not well controlled. So if you think about it, bacteria like sugar, and any place that's going to have a higher sugar, bacteria will thrive, they'll grow, and they'll reproduce. So if blood sugar is high, that's going to translate to sugar being high in the bladder and in the urine uh, or in the lung uh, with an increased risk of infection occurring in those areas. How do you treat the infections in a woman who is diabetic? 
You treat with antibiotics like you normally would. Uh, the dose of antibiotic and the length of treatment may change. And if the infections are recurrent, uh, some doctors might prescribe chronic low-dose antibiotics to keep the infections at bay, um, which is an option if it's really bad. But unfortunately, nobody really wants to be exposed to antibiotics for that long. What would you say are the top three warning signs of diabetes in women? I usually tell my patients to let me know if they have excessive thirst, excessive hunger, if they're urinating frequently, particularly if they're getting up at night to urinate, if they have weight changes, either up or down, that aren't dietary related, and in women, yes, if they have recurrent urinary tract infections, that can sometimes be one of the first things that we see. Knowing what someone who has diabetes is going through, it's understandable that women are twice as likely to have depression. So is depression a warning sign? Diabetes can actually make depression worse, and depression can actually make diabetes worse. So there's definitely an interplay there. Um, if you look at a woman who has diabetes, she's undergoing a number of different things emotionally. She's being diagnosed with a chronic disease. Uh, she's perhaps aging as well. Uh, there might be weight issues there. So there's a number of things that can interplay. But the most important thing is that there's also a physiologic reason. We know that blood sugars themselves can affect the brain and can affect hormones that regulate mood. So fluctuations in sugars can definitely have an interplay with emotion. Is there a special diet that somebody should follow? We do think that caloric restriction is important, particularly if you're trying to lose weight. And in general, I recommend to my patients a higher protein diet with limited carbs. That doesn't mean no carbs. Diabetics can eat carbohydrates, um, but in moderation and combined with certain foods. What about exercise? Are there specific exercises that diabetic women can do to help their condition? It's been shown that aerobic activity is the best thing that you can do for two reasons. Number one, it'll help in weight loss. And number two, independent of weight loss, the activity itself will make your body more sensitive to insulin. It'll bring down blood sugars for up to 48 hours after exercising. What diabetes message is just not quite getting to women yet. I think the prevention message is really important, that you do not necessarily have to develop diabetes if you've had gestational diabetes, or if you have those risks that we can intervene with diet and lifestyle and perhaps with meds to prevent the development of diabetes. And I also think it's very important for women to understand that even though you don't have a pain or you don't bleed or there's nothing overt with diabetes, that it's important to get checked and if it's there, it's important to treat it appropriately to prevent the long-term problems that can occur. Dr. Mathur, thank you so much. It looks like women living with diabetes have a lot to be hopeful for. So we appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, for more information about diabetes, visit our diabetes health centers at lifescript.com and Cedars-Sinai at cedars-sinai.edu. This has been Ask the Doctor, a Lifescript Cedars-Sinai Women's Health Report. I'm Stacey Galandi.